Yo, what's up everybody? Jumping here and I am back on some Assassin's Creed Valhalla and today I'm going to be showing off what I believe to be the very best build in the entire game. This is a dual spear light attack spamming build and oh my god, this absolutely just destroys everything. I am playing on very hard difficulty, that's all I play on at this point and let me tell you that it absolutely makes it a joke. It is crazy because not only will you absolutely destroy every enemy that you come against, but you will rarely ever get hit because one of the things about this build is that this is a light attack spamming and dodging build. So because you're always dodging and you are using spears, which they have, of course, some really good range to them, you just never really get hit. Like that's just the reality of it. And when you do get hit, if you wanted to, you could actually set this up to have like a ridiculous amount of like health regen as well that is an option so this build is crazy now one thing I wanted to quickly mention is I will have timestamps I will pin a comment if you want to skip around use the timestamps and also I did recently start a second playthrough and in that second playthrough right now I'm at like 100 power and I've actually gotten the bare minimum just to make this build work and man, it destroys. It absolutely makes that playthrough a joke in terms of just destroying everything. And this build works extremely good against normal enemies. It works great against big enemies. It works really good against animals. And it also just destroys bosses, which you will see in this little gameplay demonstration. Now, another thing you might notice is that I'm using Fire Strike. Now, it doesn't matter if you're using Fire Strike or Poison Strike. I would recommend one or the other though because they did actually buff both of the abilities with the most recent patch. What they did was they made it so that Poison Strike and Fire Strike will now apply to both of your weapons. So it makes it like so much easier and faster to apply fire status or poison status to the enemy. Now if you're wondering why I'm using fire over poison, really it comes down to the fact that I do not like poison because of the skill Miasma, what it does is that it makes it so that you have all of these poison clouds, and I just hate that. I can't see what's going on. And it's really great, don't get me wrong, but it's just I do not like having all the poison clouds when I'm fighting. So that's why I'm not using it. And instead I'm using fire, but I love fire as well. Alrighty guys, so now I'm going to go over everything you need to know about this build, from the weapons, to the runes, to the armor, to the skills, to the abilities... I will go over everything in great detail. So the first thing we're going to talk about are the weapons. And one thing you're going to notice with all the weapons is that they actually do have some pretty great synergy with their main perks because they all have to do with dodging. Now the first spear is the Furred Spear, which I hope I'm saying that right, but I'm probably mispronouncing that, so I apologize. But what this one does is that this will give you increased speed when dodging. It's actually 10 speed, which is quite good. And it's for 2.5 seconds, which isn't the longest duration. But to be honest with you, what you can do is once you get enough attack speed, then what you want to do is you want to do your light attacks because that's the whole point. We're just really doing light attacks unless we have to do a heavy attack. We do our light attacks to get into the light combo finisher, which is that horizontal attack that you could see in the beginning gameplay. Whenever I see that, then I know, okay, I need to dodge. The 2.5 seconds are up, so whenever I do my light combo finisher, I dodge and I reset the perk. So that's a good rule of thumb if you want to always have your dodging perks going. Now, if you want to get this spear, I mean, it's super early. It's right next to the settlement, literally. You can just go and get it right away and... You will actually go to this location during one of the main story alliance quests. And it's like one of the very first ones. Now there is like a locked door and that's a part of the quest. So keep that in mind. But you can get the spear like right away without needing to be in the quest itself. This is a location called Off Church. And as you can see, it's right next to the settlement. So this shouldn't be a problem at all to find and to get the spear if you are just starting out. Now my second spear is the Cadfark Spear. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but once again, I might be mispronouncing it. But this is a very awesome spear with a lot of synergy for this build. But to be honest with you, you can really use whatever spear you want 
as your second spear. Because there is one you can get like right away at the start of the game. You have to fight a boss, but it's in Norway. You can get that spear. And on my other playthrough, I am using that other spear. Because this spear, you get this from the story. And it's not like super late, but it's also not super early. I'm not even going to talk about like how you get it. But basically, it's given to you through the story. So keep that in mind. And if you're at like the super end game, if you want to use something like Odin Spear, that's fine too. You can go ahead and use it. Now this one is really good. I do like it. But if I have to switch a spear out, this would be the one because it gives you back damage. Now it has a duration after dodging of 2.5 seconds like every other perk like that. But it gives you 25 back damage, which is actually a lot to be honest with you. That's a really big boost. The problem is, is that you're not always hitting enemies in the back. And because of that, this is a great perk, but it's not a perk that I think is like insane. But it does have really good synergy for everything else that we're doing. Now let's talk about the bow because it also has amazing synergy. This is the Spartan's bow. And this bow, you can get this from the Ubisoft Connect store, which you get like the coins. You need 100 coins to unlock this. But to get the coins, you have to do like different things in Ubisoft games. It's not real money. I'm not really down to spend real money on a game like this. But I'm definitely down to actually buy this because it's earned through doing things in the game. But this is totally worth it. If you have the 100 coins from the Ubisoft Connect store, buy this bow if you're going to try to do this build. Because this is actually a unique perk, by the way. I haven't seen this on anything else in the game. This will give you increased critical chance after dodging. It's 2.5 seconds like the rest of them, but it's 30 critical chance, which is actually quite a lot. A comparison would be the Viper Bow. Now, if you cannot get this for some reason, use the Viper's Bow. That one will give you critical chance after each hit up to 10 times, and that will cap out at 30 critical chance. But you have to hit the enemy 10 times to get the 30 critical chance, where with this, all you gotta do is dodge. So it's much easier. Plus it has great synergy for what we're doing. Because we're already dodging to get all the other perks to trigger as well. So this is amazing. If you have the 100 Ubisoft Connect coins, buy this. It's totally worth it. Now let's actually talk about the runes and all that type of goodness when it comes to the weapons. The first one I have, which I do want to say by the way, the runes aren't like super important if you don't have these don't worry it doesn't make or break the build i can tell you firsthand from my other playthrough i absolutely am destroying everything and on that playthrough all i have is i have the armor i have dual spears i have the bow and i am just destroying everything and i'm playing on very hard difficulty as well now the runes do actually make the build better so that is something but don't worry too much if you don't have like really good runes. But in this weapon, I have increased melee damage after a dodge, which obviously has perfect synergy for what we're doing. That perk comes from a dagger that you get in Norway, and it's 15 melee damage. So that is awesome. Now, the minor runes I have in this, I have fire buildup and I have light damage. Now, you don't need the fire buildup. I like it, though, because if you're watching the gameplay, you would have seen me, like, lighting those enemies on fire so quickly. It's awesome. You can do the same thing with poison buildup if you want to use poison instead. I definitely like that a lot. But there's a lot of options you can use. You can do critical chance if you want. You can do critical damage. You can do general attack. But I definitely would say you want light damage. Light damage over everything else because light damage will give you damage and stun damage at the same time. Same with heavy damage. It gives both stun and damage. Where attack will just give you general damage and melee damage will just give you melee damage. So if you're wondering like the difference between all the different damages, that's the difference. Light damage, in my opinion, would be the best for this build. And when it comes to the other minor rune, like fire buildup, it's up to you really what you want. But I really do like having fire buildup on there. Now for this weapon, I actually have increased critical chance after each hit. That's the Viper Bow Perk. So it's 30 critical chance. 
meaning that I can get an additional 60 critical chance. That is crazy. I get a lot of crits with these spears. And by the way, I mean the spears, they have like a really high critical chance to begin with. It's the same as daggers. It actually matches the dagger, so that's really cool. Now in this particular one, I have light damage for the minor runes. You only want to ever do three of the same minor runes for the weapons. That is because of diminishing returns. Now, I could literally make an entire video talking about diminishing returns. I'm not going to do that here because it's going to take up way too much time. If you want to see a video like that, just let me know. Maybe I'll actually make it. But I will give you a very quick example of diminishing returns when it comes to this build. So, let's actually take a look at my light damage. My light damage is at 137. My heavy damage is at 122. Now, with the skill tree, you should end up having 122 light damage and 122 heavy damage by default. When you, like, fill everything in, that's why you see that. And, obviously, I am boosting my light damage by 15 because I have minor runes in. So, if I was to actually put in another light damage rune, you would think I would get another 5, right? No. That's when the diminishing returns will kick in. And it will actually be just two. It went up from 137 to 139. So obviously that's pretty bad when it comes to diminishing returns. So it's something to always look out for. Take a look at your stats whenever you're trying different things. Because it's possible you can be getting diminishing returns. And by the way, there's a lot of diminishing returns. Especially when you get like super end game. A lot of this stuff, by the way, does not affect me on my other playthrough when I'm really low power, so that's something. But for me right now, where I'm at like the end game, like this, well, guess what? It does affect me, so a lot of my decisions you'll see is actually based on diminishing returns. Like, for example, just again, I don't want to like go too much into it, but my major rune I have in this bow is increased speed after each hit. Now, I might actually be suffering diminishing returns from that. Maybe I'm not even benefiting from it. It's possible. The minor runes, by the way, are fire buildup. But one of the things I know for a fact, at least when it comes to my stats and I actually take a look at it, if I was to actually put an attack increasing major rune in here, so an example of that would be this one right here, Chain Fury Rune, increase attack after each hit up to 10 times. This gives 15 attack, by the way. I know that. Same with, there's another one which gives increased attack after a combo finisher up to 5 times, which this one gives 15 attack. If I was to put these in, I actually will not get any bonus from them. At least, like, on paper, when I look at my stats, I won't get a bonus from them. And that is because of my armor. My armor actually is giving me an attack bonus. And because of that, it seems like that takes the priority, and that actually gives me my attack bonus, and any other attack bonus I put in, at least major rune-wise, is not benefiting me. So it's very weird. You have to play around with this stuff, and like I said, this shouldn't affect you, like, earlier in the game. When when you get to, like, the end game like this, and you're, like, max power, you'll start to notice a lot more diminishing returns. So I wanted to point that out because I don't really see people talking about it, but it is something to look out for. And by the way, Another really good major rune that I do use from time to time and I would potentially recommend it is actually this one. This curative rune that basically makes it so that critical hits can give you health back. This is actually pretty awesome. Like, you are pretty much invincible with that, with this build. So I just wanted to point that out. Now, the armor I'm using is the Mentor's armor. This is a great armor. Now, I do have a video about how you can get this armor. I'll put a link in the description if you don't have the armor. But I think that most people do just because everybody kind of knows that this is a very good armor. Now, I do want to actually bring up a DLC armor that is coming out. There is one that is going to be all about lighting enemies on fire. And I know that it looks awesome. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people are going to get it just because it looks cool. But let me tell you that I think that this build with dual spears, lighting enemies on fire, this is the way to go for that armor. It's going to be overpowered. So if you have that armor, try this build out. It's going to work like a charm. 
Now, when it comes to the Mentor set, though, this is pretty much the best vanilla game armor because it gives you the most offense. You get increased attack after critical hits, and you also get increased speed after critical hits. You can get five stacks, and it has a duration of 35 seconds. Now, the maximum bonus is 20 attack, but because of diminishing returns, it's actually more like 15 for me. That's one thing I've noticed. And like I said, I can't stack this with other major runes. Now, what's interesting, the minor runes, if I put attack minor runes in, I can put three of them in for 12 additional attack. And guess what? It doesn't conflict with the Mentor's armor. It's fine. But when I try to do the two major runes, or at least I try to do the Mentor's armor with another attack major rune, that's when it conflicts. So, it's kind of insane. Same with the attack speed, by the way. The attack speed I get off of this, I believe, is like 4 or 5. Now, the thing is, I don't really care about the attack speed. I want to boost my attack speed as much as possible because I want to turn spears into daggers. I want to attack as fast as possible. And if you were watching the gameplay, you can see I do attack very quickly. It's pretty insane. But the Mentor's armor is great. Now, the major rune I have in this is increased speed when surrounded by more than two enemies so it's pretty good i do like it a lot once again you don't have to use that you don't need it it's not make or break but there is a rune that i do think is stupid good as well for this and that's actually the mentor's rune it gives you increased evasion after each hit now the reason why this is so good is because obviously we're dodging a lot so this is going to help us and i'm pretty sure this gives at least 15 evasion it could actually be 20 I have have tested it, I have looked at it after like hitting enemies multiple times, I've paused it to look at my stats, and I'm pretty sure it's between 15 to 20 evasion, so I do think this is a pretty good one that you might want to try using, potentially. Now the minor runes I have in this is actually melee resistance, and if you actually take a look at my gauntlets, I have health, I have triple health in this. Now the rest of it, all nine of these slots... Yes, it's actually all nine of the slots, which is 18 melee damage. That is crazy. Now, here's the thing. This is kind of interesting as well. When you talk about diminishing returns, I could put in all of these, right, to give me 18 melee damage. And guess what? I don't actually suffer diminishing returns. But if I was to try to put in more, let's say... I filled in the rest of these slots. I put in two here, and I put in three there, so that's five total. It's ten melee extra damage. Guess what? The diminishing returns would kick in, and I would be at 153. So, yeah. It's kind of weird and crazy. Like I said, I could probably make a whole video showing this off and demonstrating it, but just know that for whatever reason... You don't really suffer diminishing returns if you put 9 melee damage in your armor. Or 9 different minor runes for that. Now let's talk about the skills because obviously this is also important. I always say this, this is the truth. Get every skill. That's what you want. You want to get every skill anyway. It's all going to affect your damage. Obviously there are some things that you want to look for. You do want to get light damage. Light damage is super important because that's your damage. Melee damage as well, obviously. One of the first things to get is heavy dual wield. You're trying to dual wield spears. You need heavy dual wield. So go and get that like as soon as you can. Especially once you actually do have two spears to dual wield. And then after that, like there's other good ones. One of them, because we're dodging a lot with this build. One of them definitely is brush with death. This is amazing. It gives you that slow-mo when you dodge definitely get this and also like a couple good skills that i like i like last chance healing which let me find that for you i believe it's right here last chance healing and then there's also grit grit is awesome for healing this is actually kind of broken when it comes to poison or fire because if you have an enemy like lit on fire or if you have poison going this actually like instantly heals you so if you get hit you're just going to get your health back like instantly because that's just how this works so that's a really awesome perk to go with this and then obviously a couple other things you want to get 
is you want to get like the spear bonuses that you'll find. I don't even know where they are, but actually I do know where one is. I believe it's like right here. You want to get like spear because it gives you stun, it gives you speed, it gives you critical chance. And then the other big thing is actually we're using everything is Raven besides the bow. So everything is Raven. So for this particular setup, I definitely want to get as much way of the Raven as possible because it's going to give me bonuses for my armor, but also gives me attack. It gives me stun. It gives me critical chance. Very, very good. So like I said, get every skill. That's just the reality of it. Oh, and another important one for fire would actually be, where is that? I think it's this one right here. Battlefield cremation. Enemies that you like kill while they're on fire, they stay on fire and other enemies can be set on fire. It's pretty good. It's not as good as this other one, which is Miasma. You can find that. I believe it's here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. This is the poison one. This is much better because it just makes the whole battlefield like covered in this poison cloud. The problem is I can't see and I don't like it for that. I don't like the fact I can't see, but it is really good. It will poison everything. Now, obviously, let's talk about the abilities. Okay, so Dive of the Valkyrie is amazing. It still is amazing. It's my favorite skill in the game. Get this, use it. I will put a link in the description as well to like a page on how to get every ability if you're interested. Same with Harpoon Impalement. This is also amazing. I use it a lot. This is really good, by the way, for allowing you to get behind enemies to get that backstab damage, that flanking damage. So this is a great skill. Like, it's amazing ability. But obviously, you also want to get Poison Strike and Fire Strike. Now, Poison Strike, you get this sooner than you get the Fire Strike. So the way it works is that you have to collect the medallions from the Order of the Ancients, and then you will be rewarded with these different abilities. It starts with Poison Strike, then you'll get Fire Strike, then you get the Poison Strike upgrade, and then finally you get the Fire Strike upgrade. So, honestly, you might just use Poison for that reason, because maybe you have it upgraded. And the upgrade is very good, because whenever you trigger it, you're going to pretty much light enemies on fire in front of you, or you will poison them in front of you. It is super nice. I definitely love both of these skills. I just prefer the fire because I want to be able to see what I'm attacking. And I don't like having giant clouds. I just think that's really, really annoying. Alrighty, well, I think that's going to pretty much do it for the build. I talked about everything I wanted to talk about. I definitely do believe that this is the best build that you can do in the game. At least the best weapon combination. Dual spheres are insane. They really are. Because it's kind of like using dual daggers, which dual daggers are awesome for stun locking, for just attacking really quickly. Dual spears are just like that, but they actually have range, which the biggest problem with daggers, if you ever played with dual daggers, is that the range kind of sucks. You have to get super close, where with the spears, you don't have to. You just have so many advantages with the spears. You really do. It's amazing. I didn't even talk about like, the offhand attack is actually really good with the spears as well. You can like stab a guy and throw him into a wall. Just like Harpoon Impalement, that's a great ability. And the spear can do the same thing with its offhand attack. So I definitely think that dual spears are the best weapon combo in the game. And I 100% think that this is your best build you can do. It really does make very hard difficulty extremely easy. Alrighty, well, I really do hope that you have enjoyed this video and that it has helped. If it has, will you please like the video for me? It definitely helps me out, and I really do appreciate it. Be sure to subscribe for future videos, and I really do hope that everyone has a very nice day, and peace out.